weight loss is challenging. There's no arguing that point. And it's also no argument that if you happen to be overweight or obese, then you have an increased risk for a number of health conditions. Some of which I have covered in my channel already, like diabetes and heart disease. And you've heard this a million times and I'm not here to go on about the risks of being overweight in this video. What I will be trying to explain is why exactly it's so difficult because while some people claim it's as simple as calories in, calories out, there's a little more to it. And don't get me wrong, the theory of calories in, calories out 100% makes sense and is right, but that's just the beginning of the weight loss journey. And if you're watching this wondering what I know about weight loss, personally, I don't know what it's like to go through a weight loss journey, but I do know it's a long game and my channel is all about playing the long game. So let's find out why weight loss can be so challenging. get some basics out of the way. Being overweight or obese is based on BMI, which is the body mass index. Now anyone can go ahead and calculate this. You just need to know your weight and your height. And from there, the equation is right here. It is your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. I would just go to a website and use an online calculator though, because then you just enter weight and height and then bam, you get the BMI instantly. Now at this point, I do want to just mention that BMI isn't actually the most accurate way to measure someone's body fat. It has flaws and there are some cases where it can overestimate or underestimate the body fat of a person. And the biggest example of this is when it comes to people with large amounts of muscle mass. This BMI measurement doesn't differentiate between muscle and fat. So there's lots of cases where athletes end up being classed technically as obese because they have all this muscle mass that has contributed to a high weight. For example, NBA legend Michael Jordan had a BMI of 29 when he was in his prime. And that would have technically made him overweight and close to being obese. But obviously we can look at Michael Jordan and that doesn't quite make sense. So this is the case with many high level athletes with large muscular mass. And for the simple reason of muscle weighs more than fat, which you can see here. Now, the average person though, isn't a high level athlete with large amounts of muscle mass. But this is just to mention that BMI isn't the be all and end all of health indicators. It's a tool and like all tools, it needs to be used in the right way. So these are the classifications according to BMI. And we can see that being less than 18.5, you would actually be underweight. 25 to 29.9 is the overweight category and then 30 and over is what we classify as obese. But beyond that, there is also classes of obesity, depending on how much over 30 the number is. So now we can get back to the main part of the show. Why is weight loss so difficult? Well, the reason is because your body is wired to protect itself from weight loss. It's a biological reflex from years of needing to protect itself from famine and starvation. If you think about what it was like to be a human hundreds to thousands of years ago, even as recently as a hundred years ago, food was not as easy to get a hold of as it is nowadays in developed countries. Now there are certain processes that happen in the body and these kick in when you try to lose weight. There's a name for this theory, it's called the set point theory and it pretty much puts forward the argument that everyone has a set point that the body considers its normal weight and it will work to protect that weight from going up or down. Now the reason this ends up making weight loss difficult is because if you end up in a position where you have gained weight over time and you maintain that weight for a long period of time, your body essentially gets used to this and thinks that the new weight range is now the new normal and it will do what it can to make things stay normal. So then when you go and try to lose this weight that has been gained, the body will protect it against any weight loss and this will just make weight loss difficult. It's a large reason why many people lose weight easily in the first few weeks, but then find it comes back in a few months time. So what exactly does your body do that makes losing the weight difficult? Well, the chances are if you are attempting weight loss, you are trying to eat less and also do more exercise, which means you would be putting yourself in a calorie deficit, which means you are not consuming enough energy through food to fuel your energy needs. And this is good if you want weight loss, but to your body, you are starving and this needs to be stopped. So what does it do? 
it starts to make more hunger related hormones and one of these hormones is called ghrelin. Ghrelin is also known as the hunger hormone. Its main job is to regulate how hungry you feel. It's actually made inside your stomach. What happens usually is when your stomach is empty and needing food, it will make this hormone which will then move into your blood and then it will travel all the way to your brain. Now there is a particular part of your brain that controls your hunger reflex and that is called the hypothalamus. Ghrelin will go here and essentially say, hey, we're hungry, we need food. And then guess what? You feel hungry and then you go to seek out food. Not just that though, you will likely actually crave energy dense foods, which are high calorie. So basically the things that you are probably wanting to avoid the most. Now this is obviously an important system to have in the body because we do need to know when we need to eat so that we can stay alive. But if weight loss is the goal, unfortunately your body doesn't know that you want to lose weight and it's going to do this whether you like it or not. So this is why, especially in the early days of weight loss, it can be very difficult because you are quite literally working against yourself and it takes a lot of mental work and discipline to overcome this. Now there are strategies that you can do to make this a bit more bearable in your weight loss journey and I will definitely go into that in a future video. So don't forget to subscribe because you won't want to miss that one. Now there is another hormone that is quite important to know about when it comes to weight loss and this one is called leptin. So leptin is made by fat cells and it actually works in the opposite way to ghrelin which I just talked about. Leptin will let your brain know that you are full and satisfied so that you will not have as much of a hunger reflex. If you have more fat stores then you have more leptin. Now when you go to lose weight, if it's fat that ends up being lost, you will have less leptin because as I just said, leptin is in fat cells. Now this lower level of leptin will actually send a signal to your brain that your energy reserves are decreasing and this will make your brain respond in a very reasonable way and increase your hunger and appetite because it wants to replenish your energy stores. Again, if weight loss is the actual goal, this is not helpful and this is one of the reasons that people tend to regain the weight that they end up losing during their weight loss journeys. Now aside from hormones, there are some other things working against you when you are trying to lose weight. One of which is the fact that when you lose weight, your fat cells actually change size. So this is the important thing to understand. When you lose weight, the fat doesn't necessarily disappear. Fat cells instead just become smaller. And the issue with this is that these cells also become very efficient at storing fat. So it then becomes much easier to regain any lost weight. So just slightly increasing the amount of calories you eat can lead to more weight gain than you would usually expect. And the last thing I will mention that makes weight loss especially difficult is the fact that your body will quite literally change its metabolism to preserve energy during a calorie deficit. Now what does this mean? Well. The less food you eat, then the less energy your body has to play with in order to function properly. So it will need to slow down metabolism and this means less energy will be burned and also you will likely feel tired, making it difficult to do exercise and burn more calories. And this is all done to conserve energy because again, your body thinks you are in danger if you are not getting in enough calories through food. Remember that the energy you get from food isn't just used for things like exercise, it's used for things you don't realize that you're doing, like breathing, thinking, even digesting food itself. So in times of reduced energy intake, for example, when you are trying to lose weight, your body will become efficient at using energy for all of these processes. Now this actually tends to happen a bit further along the weight loss journey. And this is because initially you have lots of energy reserves to use up. You have fat stores in the body. But after some time, your body will adapt and slow down how much energy it uses. And that makes losing weight more difficult. It's why people can plateau or hit a wall, as they say. So I will wrap things up here for now. Hopefully you have a clearer idea of all the things that go on while you're trying to lose weight and understand that there is more to it than calories in, calories out. You are quite literally working against yourself and it takes so much dedication, mental strength and discipline to go through it. So for anyone out there currently going through this, well done, keep going and take it one day at a time. Now, if you learned something, Please don't forget to give a like and subscribe, comment again, anything you want to explain further and I'll do my best to help out. But I'll see you next week and until then, keep playing the long game.